Oh, good, it's gone. Okay, today is November the 18th, 2011, and we're at the Mooresville Public Library doing an oral history interview with... Cyrus Donald Johnston. And you go by Don. And I go by okay. Don. And you're related to the Johnstons how? Who were your grandparents and parents and all? Okay, uh, on the Johnston side, my grandfather was uh, Cyrus Robert Johnston Sr. Okay. Uh, my dad was Cyrus Robert Johnston Jr., my mother was Elizabeth Donald Johnston, and her father, my grandfather, was James L. Donald. Okay, all right. And, you, of course, you were born and grew up here in Mooresville. Yeah, born in Lowrance Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no longer around, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I'll, all right, and now uh, let's start with Mr. Johnston. Uh, we'll start back that far. Okay. He, he was superintendent at the mill. Yes. Okay. And ran the hotel up on Main Street. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. Okay, and, well, as you say, he was superintendent of, it, back then it was known as Mooresville Mills, and I reckon it was even after Burlington mm -hmm. purchased it. Uh, it was. He was a superintendent, uh, and uh, uh, there was a strike down there uh, at some point in time, and he had this uh, 38 Special Pistol with a pearl handle on it, and uh, after he passed away, he gave it to my dad, and my dad was going to give it to me, but we lived in Charlotte for a while, and it stolen out of the attic, so, <laughs> so I never got that. And, um, my mother was Elizabeth Donald Johnston. She was the daughter of James okay. L. Donald, and uh, uh, they were born in 1914 on okay. the same day. Oh. Uh, oh, wow. My mother... And she's the one the Elizabeth Apartments were named yes. after. Yeah, she was the one that they named the Elizabeth Apartments after, uh, that oh. which was, at that time was owned by my grandfather, James L. Donald. Okay. And uh, there were, she was an only child. Now, on my father's side, there were five children in the family. And uh, uh, there was uh, Nesbitt Johnston, who was the oldest. Okay. Mary Frances Johnston, who was the uh, <coughs> next eldest, and then uh, uh, Isabel Johnston, and then my dad, and then Helen Johnston, who was born later. Now, Mary Frances Johnston, she owned the snack shop, which was located on Main Street next to the uh, State Theater. State Theater. Mm -hmm. And one of the claims to fame on her was that Somewhere around 1954, when Elvis was just getting started, he made a personal appearance in Charlotte. And after it was over, he came through Mooresville. And it was late at night, but the snack shop was still open. And he stopped there, and uh, he and his uh, people had uh, hamburgers. And, and uh, my Aunt Mary Frances, she talked about that for years. Uh, I don't think she even knew who he was at the time, but later she did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, he's one of the few famous people who've come through Mooresville. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, okay, and then the hotel, of course, was up there as well on Main Street. Yeah, the Johnston Hotel. And what I remember about that is it was right next to my grandma's and grandfather's home there. And when I was a kid, a young kid, there was a balcony that kind of overlooked Main Street. And there was an old gentleman that lived in the hotel. I don't remember his name now. I don't think I ever knew his name. But he would sit out there and watch the traffic go by, and I would go up there and sit with him, and that was, uh, you know, kind of a treat to sit up there with him and watch the cars go up and foot down Main Street. <laughs> and yeah, and it was up there, uh, of course, beside what's now Wachovia, because the fence is still there. Yeah, right. Uh, and all, right. and then of course the garage was. Knox Realty. Yeah, later was Knox. They tore down the house, the garage, which was made out of a stucco type material. Mm -hmm. uh, it stayed, and later, like you say, later uh, it was Knox Realty. Uh, and later the bank building, was, I mean, the hotel was torn down and and it was turned into, I remember Mills Bootery, a, a shoe store, and the Western Auto were in it at one time. Yes. And then later, of course, it became a uh, Wachovia Bank and yep. now Wells Fargo Bank, I assume. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, uh, yes, because Western Auto moved out 
uh, further up Main Street it worked yeah. after that now, uh, and uh, everything. Um, let's see. Oh, and then, okay, and then he, and then now, how long was uh, Mr. Johnston down at the mill, superintendent? He was there until he died. I think he died when he was around fifty or so. Okay. And uh, I remember. I don't know the date he died, but I remember that uh, it was shortly before Pearl Harbor because we used to have Sunday dinner at the house, and uh, okay. he was there once or twice that I recall. And then uh, I remember we were eating Sunday dinner when they announced that Pearl Harbor had, had been bombed, and he wasn't there then. He had he had passed away, so it was sometime probably in the late. Uh, 1930s that he passed away. Uh, now, when did he start the? Ho when did the hotel start? <laughs> and the reason I ask is because Hazelton doesn't really list it in his book. And <laughs> Gosh, I you know I really don't know except uh, uh, my daddy. There's some pictures of him here in front of it, and he was born in 1914. Okay, and he appears to be you know four or five years old in these pictures, so I'm assuming it was sometime several years prior to that time. And the and the John and the Central Hotel was different from the commercial hotel which stood up there as well. No, it was the same thing. Oh was it the same? They they, they called it Johnston Hotel and then they later on they called it the commercial hotel. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, because Hazelton didn't quite specify that in his book when he. Yeah. yeah. Well, we might have called it the Johnston Hotel because it was owned by the Johnstons. <laughs> Everybody else might have called it the Commercial Hotel. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then of course, uh, and then of course, you, now you started. You know, you lived over on uh, East Center. Yes. Okay. Five Twenty One East Center Avenue. It was actually. Uh, the Sloops lived on one side of us, and the Deatons lived on the other side, and then the Lawrence Hospital was Dang. right across the street at, at a candy corn type angle. And then, of course, you went to, and that means you went to South School. Yes. And then, of course, to the High School. Yeah, Junior and, High. Yeah. And then Mosul High. Now, there was a break in there. Uh, uh, actually, uh, during the war, my daddy worked for an insurance company in Charlotte, and uh, they carried the workers' compensation coverage for the shipyard in Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. And so we moved to Wilmington before I actually started school. But I came back in the third grade after the war was over. And uh, one thing I do remember, at some point in time, I was after the war was over, mm -hmm. they had a big parade downtown, and there was a guy standing on the corner down there where Goodman's drugstore used to be, shooting a shotgun off in the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was quite a celebration. Wild, wild times in <laughs> Uh Okay, well, and then, so you came back at, at about the third grade. You came back yeah. and all. And, and, and went to South School. Went South. Do you remember any of the teachers? And Yeah, Miss Cashin was my third grade teacher. Miss Kennedy was my fourth grade teacher. Ms. McManus was my fifth grade teacher. I remember those people real well. I don't remember their first names. Uh, uh, Isabel Cashin was was the uh, Cashin lady. Once I got in junior high, Cora Freeze. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. she was uh, uh, one of my teachers. Uh, and I really don't remember who had me in the eighth grade because she was a young lady. Yeah. Came in from college and didn't last too long. Uh, or oh, as a school teacher, I wasn't here too long. And of course, in uh, uh, Mooresville High, uh, Earl Tilly was one of my teachers. Uh, uh, Andy Miller, who was the football coach, oh, yeah, yeah. was one of my teachers. Uh, Now, Mooresville High was over there where Mitchell is today on Academy yeah, exactly, Street. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, across from the, I think it's the Baptist or Methodist Church. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. uh, Central Methodist, yeah. Yeah, and 
the, it's gone, but I think the gym, the building that was the gym that was right behind it's still there. And like you said, they, is that what they call Mitchell College? Mm -hmm. It's the Morrisville Campus. And they've actually incorporated, they've expanded, so they've incorporated the okay. gym into bigger. Okay. But it's still there. It's still yeah. it's still there. But I lived on, over on East Center, and I'm not telling one of these war tales, but I used to walk to school every day. And uh, uh, I remember I had a, I had a girlfriend that lived... Uh, kind of across the street from South School, and I would try to ta time my walks where I would get there about the time that she came out and I could carry her books to school for. <laughs> oh, did you ever get in trouble in school? <laughs> did I ever get in trouble? Mm -hmm. Sure did. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I don't know that I can uh, tell you exactly, but I, I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, okay, and then you went through high school. Uh, no, after high school. Went to Catawba College. Went there four years. And that's where you met, of course, Mr. Joe Pop, Coach Pop was there. No, he wasn't there then. Oh, he wasn't. Okay. But I heard stories about his football prowess. And I don't know that he was ever there other than being a football player. He was. And that, was, was, before, football. that was before I got oh. there. So after, okay, then you went to college, after college. Uh, I went to work for Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. Uh -huh. Well, first of all, first of all, <laughs> can't leave us out. Uh, I had joined the National Guard here in Mooresville. Okay. And back at that time, to keep out of the draft, which was the goal, you had to go uh, into the National Guard for six years. And part of that time included a six-month active duty tour at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And I did that. Then after that, I went to college for four years. And then after that, I went to work for an insurance company that was located in Raleigh, uh, oh, North yeah. Carolina. And yeah. uh, after that, of course, uh, I went to Florence, South Carolina for a while and worked out of my home for the same company. And then later... Went to Columbia, South Carolina, and was in an office there in Columbia, okay. which is actually where I wound up retiring. But I did go to Spartanburg for about seven years prior to uh, coming back to Columbia. Uh, but uh, I always loved Morrisville. I wish I could have stayed, but I didn't have a way to make a living, so I, <laughs> I had to go where the money was. <laughs> And it wasn't a lot of money, but it, it put yeah. bread, put food on the table. <laughs> well, what are some of your favorite memories of growing up in Morsel? Well, what uh, do you remember the most? Or? Well, there were a lot of things. Uh, there was, uh, we call it Slippery Rock. I don't know what you, you call it now. It's a park down there. Mm -hmm. The War uh, Memorial. It, yeah, but below the War Memorial. Uh -huh. uh, I used to go down there a lot. There was a, a tunnel that went underneath uh, East Center Avenue. There's a creek down there. The water in the tunnel was only about an inch deep. We used to go down there, through there, and walk through there all the time. And it was the same creek that ran through the mm -hmm. War Memorial property. Uh, and I was a lifeguard at the swimming pool when it opened up at the, uh, and in fact, I was there from year one for about four or five years while I was in high school and college. Uh, and I enjoyed that. Uh, some of my friends uh, included Joel Brawley, who's now a professor at Clemson. Yes. Uh, and Norman Wilson, who I think is back in Morsel now. Uh, and uh, Flake Howard, who I believe lives up on Lake, uh, Lake Norman now. Uh, the only thing that I really missed out on was the lake one here then. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had a chance to buy a lot for ten thousand dollars on the water. And it was back when they were damming up the uh Catawba River. Mm -hmm. And I told my mother, I said, No, nah, I can't afford that. <laughs> that was one of the more serious mistakes that I made. <laughs> Well, no one really thought the lake would be what it <laughs> turned into. Well, I tell you, I was telling my wife on the way up here, uh, I could still see some of the old houses on old 115. Mm -hmm. But if you'd ever told me there was going to be anything like exit 36 here, I wouldn't have believed it. 
I know. Isn't it amazing? It's just, yeah. Uh, well, and, and and too, and of course you saw this growing up. I mean, there were before the lake, there were communities and all out around. The, oh yeah. That are now under the water that or, or had to be moved. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, towns and all. Uh, so that was a major impact on. Yeah. Well, uh, the old river bridge. Even after the uh, the lake out there, you could still see where it connected on the. The other, the, the only, uh, trying to think of the name of that town up there. There's a little store up there. Uh, oh, not Dooley. Um, no, it's not Dooley. It's, I, it's, it's before you get to uh, uh, Denver. Yep. It's uh, uh, Terrell. 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 Yeah, and it's on, it's on Terrell's side of the lake, and uh, the... Uh, Actually, the road on the other side just ran right into the lake, uh, and you, we used to go down there some, and uh, uh, you could pull your car out there and park and and, and uh, just go swimming in the lake. <laughs> or, or watch it fill in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, now, do you remember any of the stores when you were growing up on Main Street? Do you remember where, because like we, you talked about earlier, uh, 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 in the what's now the Wells Fargo building was the was Western Auto and yeah, all. Do you remember? I do. I remember John Mackinson's. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, the men's clothing store at that time. Uh, Bella Drug Store. Uh, and on the other side of the street, there was uh, right there where the Carolina Theater used to be. There was, I think they called it the News Center. Uh, they sold magazines and, and oh, yeah. that type of thing. The City News, I believe. Uh, it was there. And then, of course, uh, the Johnston Hardware Store mm -hmm. was on uh, in the next block. And Turner uh, Hardware Store, which is still in existence today. Yep. That was one of my favorite hangouts. That's where I first got my Red Rider BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> cost $7. <laughs> Uh, it costs about thirty five now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. And, and then now, uh, and then there was it was there was a uh, lost my train of thought. A, a cafe in the hotel one there. Yeah. Yeah, and that was um, not Flo's, but I mean Mrs. Flowers. Was it Mrs. Flowers? That name sounds familiar. You know, I really don't remember. I know it was on the. There was a cafe in there, and. Uh, I remember they had the ceiling fans and that type of thing, uh, but I really don't remember who now, was responsible for that. What about going up Main Street? Do you remember any of the, the stores or houses going who lived or going up? You're talking about north? Yeah, going up north of Main. Yeah, let's see, there was uh, Bill Neal's mother. Bill Neal was a lawyer here in Morrison. Mm hmm. His mother lived up there on uh, North Main. Uh, uh, Dr. Skeen and his family were on North Main. Johnny Matheson, who was later on uh, uh, the head man down at the mill, he had a kind of a mansion there on the corner of uh, uh, Main and Stewart. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and before he lived there, one of my friends, John Neal Stewart, lived there. I think that's Hawaii, the Stewart Avenue, where that came from. But it was a frame house in. When Johnny bought it, they bricked it in. It looks the way it does today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Still does. Uh, Layton Horton lived uh, on the right side across the street from there. Uh, and he was kind of a character. He... Uh, I had never heard of the stock market before back then, <laughs> but he had made a lot of money on the stock market, and uh, uh, he was pretty independent. Uh, and let's see if I remember anything. Oh, the uh, used to be a Catholic church right there on the corner. I believe mm -hmm. it's a restaurant now. It is. And then. Uh, it is. I don't know, when you, as you go south, you get into where the police station... Now, when I was a boy, the police station wasn't located where it is now. It was it was on Broad Street, uh, uh, 
kind of well, where, where the First Presbyterian Church is, it's kind of behind that, mm -hmm. and Bob McKnight's Pontiac place was next to it. Yep. Uh, There's an antique store. Mrs. Stales is in the building that was that still stands that was right beside that. Yeah. 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 And uh, my dad went into business with uh, some people from Mooresville, uh, Jim McMora, who owned Safety Chevrolet, and Johnny Muller. Uh, they formed the MJM furniture company there on uh, Main Street. It didn't last too long either. <laughs> and I don't think it made very much money. <laughs> uh, and okay, and then and of course we've got pictures here which will which I'll I'll uh, copy and scan and make a part available with all this. But now we did talk you mentioned earlier the Johnston coal and ice and all that. Now how were y'all how was your Johnstons tied in to that, because right. I know it was a big family. All right, uh, Nathaniel, we call him Uncle Nat, Uncle Nat Johnston owned that. Mm -hmm. He had two sons, Dick Johnston and Hal Johnston. Yep. And Hal Johnston was Tommy Johnston's stepfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and Hal's wife used to be a librarian here. Yeah, and now, now my daddy worked there in the summertime to get in shape for football. They had an ice plant down there. And uh, I remember him telling about that. Uh, and there was a store down there that we enjoyed visiting. And it might be the same store that that's in this picture. Back then they called it Buck's Corner, but I don't remember it by that name. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, uh, and that was in the block. That was in there with the, up from the. Yeah. Uh, now my son who moved to Charlotte, he came up here uh, to visit and bring his wife and Shore around. And down there on Broad Street, the, the building on the corner there was called Johnston Square. And uh, they had a lot of stuff in there about the Johnstons. And, and he said, Daddy, where'd the money go? And I said, Donnie, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Because there was money in that family at one time, but yeah. we, but my and my family didn't get any of it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and, and uh, yes, because today, well, putting it into today's perspective, the there's the Yale Mantle and Tallulah's. Tallulah's is in the corner building, which is on the corner of uh, Center and and Broad. Yeah. And then uh, and then the Yale Mantle is in, I believe, where Bucks used to be. Yeah. And then and then the the rest of the building, which is a saddle shop, and well, the saddle shop, and then the ice part's been torn down. So yeah, just putting a little, putting that into perspective for because it's changed a little bit, as you can tell, Morsel's changed just a little. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but when I ride down Main Street, I can still tell I'm in Morsel. <laughs> Uh, oh. The only thing that really changed things was that Civic Center built by the Max. It kind of took away the Belk Store and the uh, State Theater, and mm -hmm. that, I think all that's where that used to be. The People's Furniture. People's Furniture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, which was right there on the corner. Yeah. Yeah, now I knew Pat Rogers. He was a classmate of mine, uh, and his uh, daddy ran the people's furniture store. Is it still there? No, no, it's, it's part of the Citizen Center. It's, yeah. It's, uh, and his brother Harding uh, was, was a dentist here in Mooresville. Uh, went to Davidson College, I remember that. By the way, my dad and his brother both, both went to Davidson College. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of people from Mooresville went to Davidson. Is that where you went? No, no, I went I went a little bit further. I went down to UNC Charlotte. But, <laughs> but that's where your dad went, isn't it? Uh, he tried there. He ended up going to Wake Forest. Oh, okay. He tried there, but he ended up going to, to Wake. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he I became a dentist, you know. Huh? <laughs> uh, I thought your grandfather, he was a Clemson man, I think. He was. Yeah, he was. He was, he was Clemson. Remember that. Class of 1940. Yeah. yeah. He had that stickers on his car. Hip day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, um,. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, now we did talk about the, the the theaters. You mentioned the Carolina, and we had the state, the the state theater. And there was another one uh, down there in the vicinity of where, on the other side of Turner's Hardware, it's called the Center Theater. Right. 
and they showed uh, <coughs> third run movies. But it didn't cost very much. Back then, it cost nine cents to get in the movie, so we didn't worry too much about that. <laughs> Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then we had the two dri- we had two drive-ins. Yeah, North Morrisville Davison, and, mm-hmm. and I don't know what it was called. Uh, Rowan. Uh, it was on the Salisbury in town, but I don't remember exactly what it was called. All right. But uh, I went to both of them. <coughs> they were fun. They were yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's see, I uh, see, Morsel was only, what, about 9,000, a little less than 9,000 people? Something like that. When uh, you were growing? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I think the lake and how and uh, Interstate 77 <coughs> saved Morsel because I think it, I remember it being on kind of on the decline, but I don't know that. I, I'm just saying that. But, uh, but, yeah, we were starting when the mill started to close. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, let's see. Um, I was trying to think of another story. Oh, um, well, talk about the Elizabeth Apartments and all. Uh, I know they were built in the 1920s, about the same time the church, the First Presbyterian Church built their educational building. Yeah. Elding and all. Uh, and, and all. And how long did your family have the apartments? Uh we had it until my mother sold it after my grandmother died, and that was probably around 1954, uh, somewhere in there. I don't know exactly. I know that I went to college, and it, when I came back, it, we didn't have it anymore. <laughs> now, I have to I have to ask this, because I've learned with Morsel, uh you know, everybody builds something somewhere because either they already own the land or they inherited the land. Why did you? Why did they put the apartments there across from the the church? I mean, did, was that did y'all own that or was that yeah, a family well, home? Yeah, or? yeah they, uh, my grandfather James L. Donald owned that. He also owned the adjacent lot where Teeter's uh, uh, grocery store started, uh-huh. and that's another story I have to tell you if you're interested. Oh, tell, that's interesting, yes, yeah, tell that one. All right, Willis Teeter, of course, uh, was the owner of Teeter's, and mm-hmm. my mother went to school with him, and he dropped out when he was very young, I think, maybe 14, 15, whenever you could leave, and all I heard them say was that he wasn't too smart. <laughs> I think maybe he was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because <laughs> they partnered with Mr. Harris, who ran the yeah, wholesale yeah, meat yeah, in yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, and it was a big deal, and and uh, I, I don't think there was anything wrong with his smarts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now he and, and Willis had a brother. Who was his brother? He who was his brother? Um, Willis Teeter's brother. Uh huh. I don't know. Okay, I can't remember. I know there was a son called Levette Teeter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, and so y'all, we, uh, we got off the apartments, but anyway, uh, so y'all started the apartments, and then, now why were they named after your uh, mother? Or? I think my mother was kind of the apple of my grandfather and grandmother's eye, and they decided to name it for her. Call them the Elizabeth Apartments. Yeah. Because they're very nice apartments. I, I've, yeah. I've been in them well, many a times. Uh, they're very nice. My, I'll tell you another story. Uh, Roland Morgan, who used to be the superintendent of schools here. Yes, Dr. Morgan. He saw that all of the new school teachers that came to town uh, uh, got an apartment over at my grandmother's apartment. And uh, there was one guy in there. There was kind of a scandal over it. But anyway, uh, my grandmother called. I was, I was in the room. I heard the conversation. Uh, she called up Roland Morgan and said, those apartments are named after my daughter. How dare you send somebody like that over there? <laughs> and she let him have it. <laughs> and from what I understand about Mr. Morgan, there were very few people who could do that. Well, she did. Uh, <laughs> and it might have been to her detriment, too, because I don't think he sent any more <laughs> teachers over there to, to apply for an apartment. <laughs> now I take it. Now your parents, of course, stayed in Mooresville after after coming back. 
Yeah. After coming back from Wilmington. Yeah, my dad died in uh, 1957. Okay. And my mother was here until she died in, uh, I believe it was... Uh, 97. When? 97. 97. Wow. And uh, she's buried over here at the uh, Glenwood Cemetery. Yeah. My father is too. Uh, yeah. My grandparents are all in the Willow Valley Cemetery. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the old Willow. Um, yeah, well, there was another. There was something else we had, you said earlier, and that, and all. Uh, I'd already forgotten. Something. Uh, what was you, well? You already mentioned one. You uh, uh, favorite? Did you have any other favorite hangouts in Morville? Other places you like to hang out. Mm. Uh, well, the snack shop and Miller's Drug Store, that was the stop after school. Uh, when the War Memorial was built, we, we'd go over there and yeah. play ping pong. And uh, in the summertime, of course, we enjoyed that pool. Yeah. Is that pool still there? It's still there. It's still there. Now, it had a, pu it had a putt putt course behind it, too, didn't it? The yeah, it sure did. Sure did. Uh, and uh, I. When I was in third grade, we had a picnic over there. We call it Slippery Rock. What's it called? It's still called that. Still that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, one of some one of the boys rolled a tire off the top of that thing, <laughs> and it, it hit this girl that was kind of toward the bottom and sent her sprawling into the creek there, and she didn't get injured. It was yeah. but she could have very easily. <laughs> Now the war now the the war memorial was built when? Oh, I think in. It, let's see, I started working there at the pool as a lifeguard in '55, and the war memorial had been there some time prior to that. Okay, I'm guessing it was around 1949, 1950, somewhere in that range. Yeah. And it was, and it was sort of like the first citizen center for Morville. I mean, yeah, we, had, I, we call it the teenage club. Yes, I'd forgotten that name. Yeah, because it well, like you said, it had the park, it had the pool, it had the uh, the golf course. So it was like a little community yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and talking about the golf course, uh, I spent a lot of time over at the uh, Morville Mills Golf Course, which I had it. Probably got a different name now. It, it's the it's the town golf course. It's the municipality. Okay, yeah, you used to go sledding there in the winter time. People I understand still people do. People still do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's still a great, yeah. uh, great, <laughs> great place. Uh, now, okay, now, uh, well, well, we talked about the hotel being, of course, on Mr. Johnston. I mean, up there with the house and all. Where uh, where did else, where did your other grandparents and parents and all I mean not parents but grandparents live? Did they live on Main Street as well, or did they live like on Academy or Center? Or no, we uh, my grandparents uh, and my mother and father we all lived on at five twenty one East Center Avenue. Okay, but according to these pictures, at one time before that house was built, they lived on West Center oh, Avenue. Yeah. But I'm not I don't know the address. Okay, so y'all didn't live on Main like. No, no, that was my father's family. Okay, uh, and did he, and, and they live? Did now where did, did they live anywhere else off of Maine? Did they live? I mean, as I say this, as as the buildings got built, you know, people who had houses up there would move like to Center Street or or all. Well, Mary Frances Johnston, when they tore down the old home place there, she moved. Uh, I and that call was, it, I call it the Mount Ola Highway. Her house yes. is located right behind Dr. Skeen's uh, office there uh, on uh, the Mount Ola Highway. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I know who you Yes. Yeah. But everybody else... Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't uh, think of the road name. Well, it may be uh, Park Street. Park Street, that's it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But uh, everybody else, uh, same problem I had. They couldn't make a living in Mooresville. Now, everybody worked at the cotton mill at one time before they left town. I did? They? Okay. Yeah, my mother did, uh, Neb did, uh, Isabel, and uh, my dad's younger sister 
uh, Helen Johnston, she moved to Charlotte and worked down there. Okay. Uh, Mary Frances Johnston stayed in the old home building oh, uh, and took care of my grandmother until uh, she died and then beyond that. Her son was Jack Archer. Right. And uh, Jack did very well. He went to Davidson College also. And he was president of one of Ross Perot's companies out in Dallas, Texas when he died. Wow. Holy cow. Now, uh, now for clarification, when you say the old home, that's the, the, the home that was the hotel? That's where the park is now with that yeah. rolled iron fence in. Right. Yeah. That, okay. Just, you have to be and you clear. can see that rolled iron fence in some of these pictures. Yep. And, it's still, and it is still there today. You know, it's I know. Still... That's the only thing I recognize. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I reckon the last time I was up there, uh, I rent a place. I have some rental property here in Mooresville. Mm -hmm. I was meeting the people at the Wachovia Bank uh, to sign the lease. And I walked next door there and just looked around. Uh, now, London Mac Robinson tells me that there was a boxwood plant on that property, two of them, and one of them went to... The museum, is that where it is? No, both of them actually came to my house. Oh, okay. I, they, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they used to be, uh, used to, they used to be up on, uh, well, as you remember, the fence ran yeah. to Main Street. And on either side of the fence were the two boxwoods. And when we decided to redo the boxwoods, I mean redo the park, uh, and all, we redid the, uh, they wanted to save the boxwoods. And so, but I, I took them to, yeah. to keep. And okay. unfortunately, one passed, but the other one is still going strong. Okay. So, and all, and everything. But anyway, um, hold on, we'll pause just a moment. We're talking about John Mackinson. So at, yeah. the at the time that I was growing up, Mr. Side Mac and Mitchell Mac ran the place. And Mr. Side Mac wore one of those uh, straw hats that had the flat top and the brim. Uh -huh. And... Uh, there was a Dillon, there was a movie that came out about John Dillinger at the time, and he was wearing a hat like that. And they, start, they started calling Mr. Side Mike Dillinger. 